I guess I'll go grab the weed eater and I'm gonna get all this knocked down just so I can have the visual. Oh, it's so foggy. <laughs> the camera's fogging up from being inside in the air conditioning. So this is like the outer bits of Hurricane Idalia. Good morning, beautiful people. So we're supposed to have a hurricane in the neighborhood in the next couple days. Uh, I don't think we're really gonna get too much of it, maybe a little bit of rain, but it's uh, too far south of us. Uh, so in the meantime, it's really business as usual. Project I was working on yesterday is I'm working on getting the greenhouse set up so we can get some you know, winter stuff, some fall stuff planted. You can probably tell just by looking, we've just kind of let the greenhouse do what it wants. We, uh, we've had our tomatoes in here, which they're nearing done, but there's still a lot of fruit in here. You guys can see there's like, there is a whole mess of tomatoes still in here to harvest. I'm gonna leave the tomatoes where they are. They can just finish doing what they're doing. Uh, it's this side really that I need to tackle. I'm probably going to leave this, uh, the squash vine, even though it needs to be kind of like pushed back a little bit because it is, uh, it's gotten a little bit out of control, but it looks cool and it's producing pig food. So along the way, like I have random sweet potatoes that are just kind of doing their thing. These sweet potatoes are flowering. I've got some over here. I'm probably gonna take out this vine right here just so it doesn't interfere with my sweet potatoes. But generally, the rest of this bed all over here, I got in here yesterday while it was raining and was pulling out a uh, really aggressive, uh, it's like a grass, grows via rhizome. Got into it and it was just like, this took me way too long, just digging up pieces of rhizome root bit by bit. I'm just gonna get in here today with a weed eater, knock that corner down so I can actually, you know, see what I've got, see where I'm working. Uh, it's pretty overgrown, pretty out of control. I guess I'll go grab the weed eater and I'm gonna get all this knocked down just so I can have the visual. the size of that praying mantis. I've never seen one that big. She's huge. Like I've never in my life seen one that big. That's huge. There are so many displaced bugs in here. Wow. There's a lot more space back here than I realized. <laughs> a lot more space back here. So, I have some greenhouse friends. There's a wasp nest there, and a real big one right there. Yeah, they're a little upset with me right now. Uh, luckily, they're not dive bombing me or anything. Uh, generally, wasps, like as long as they like know that you're not gonna mess with them, they leave you around alone while you're around. Um, and they see me in here enough, and they've never dive-bombed me. So, we kind of have an understanding. That isn't part of what I needed to do, but I figure while I'm getting all absolutely covered in grass guts, I figured I'd get over here and do that. It's been a hard year for Corbin's construction company. Those tractors have sat more than they've ran this year. Kind of sad. He's ready to graduate to actual equipment. Imagination powered uh, tractors. Just, they don't cut it anymore. You know what's kind of cool? Like, I don't know that I really like that I let these loofahs grow up all over the side of this. 
uh, but it does look really stinking cool. I mean, look at this. It's like one or two plants that came up voluntarily. You can tell where we got in here to harvest and we trampled too many vines and it killed it. But it doesn't seem to hurt it. I think we're now taking up a 40 foot by 40 foot section. Not to mention whatever's growing inside. This thing has actually climbed up to the peak several times, these kukuzis. Oh, there's a elderberry in there I just saw. That's That's gotta be bird planted. Uh, well anyways, these had climbed up to the peak and <laughs> they get up there and then we have a big thunderstorm and they get blown off and then they lay in the grass. Something I'm actually really surprised about, I haven't found any snakes in here. I figured for sure I would at least see uh, we have these little green snakes, and they're called a rough green snake. Real pretty, emerald green, just a real skinny, long snake. I actually caught one, the kids found it, and I took it and I let it loose in here, and I haven't seen it since, so maybe it moved on. But little snakes like that eat their weight in bugs. We got some grasshoppers and crickets. Those things can have their way out here. Now the part that nobody likes, clean up. haul that up there to the chickens because they're currently not making compost right now. It's just a whole bunch of mud up there. So I'll just take all this. There's a lot of seed in this. Otherwise I would use it for mulch on where those beds go, but I don't feel like adding a whole bunch more grass seed any, you know, any more than is already there. Uh, so I'm just gonna make compost out of it. All right, this corner's done. Tell you what, that took way longer than I was hoping it would, but that looks so much better. Uh, I think I'm in that, that segment of society. There's videos on YouTube that you see every now and then, they'll just pop up. The algorithm's like, hey, you would probably like to watch this. Uh, videos where it's just dudes cutting overgrown lawns. I don't know why I sit and watch some of those videos, but they're so satisfying. Like any guy who enjoys mowing the lawn, you watch those videos and it's like, yeah, that was satisfying. Same here. That was very satisfying. Those, le those weeds were like eye level. I let this corner get way out of control. Now it's dealt with. Looks way better. All right, I'm gonna take this load and then figure out where the heck I'm sticking all this stuff. Because really, if I just move it out the door, then it just stays and rots outside the door rather than rotting in here. But that's probably what it's gonna what it's gonna be. All right. So things that I don't want to get covered up are some of these sweet potatoes over here, right on the ground. And then we had some extra jalapenos that got forgotten about until about a month ago. Uh, I stuck them in here. The wall will close, so theoretically they could live in here. That one's a little close to the wall, so that probably wouldn't make it. But the one that's furthest in is actually doing the best. So I'm just gonna like clear out around them, give them some, some mulch, and uh, we'll see how long they live in the greenhouse, see if, they, if we truly did extend our season in here. All this brush, I think I'm just gonna clean up and just haul it outside the door for right now. If I need it as a mulch, I can bring it back in as a mulch. Yeah, all right, I'm gonna deal with the buckets and that riffraff over there.
that actually fluffed up pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty happy with, like, it's still workable after, I mean, I, I rototilled this last fall for our winter stuff that we had in here. And this is still pretty fluffy. I'm pretty happy about that. We tried to not walk on this and compact it. Really, the walkway right here is all the only place we walked. Uh, I need to weed that, but I can knock that down with a hoe real quick. But yeah, this bed's still pretty fluffy. I'm gonna grab my amendments and some chicken manure and get it all mixed in and then make my beds. This is chicken manure. This once was wood chips at one point. I put, I like to put wood chips in with the chickens under the roosts and then they poop on it. And this is about, I don't know, two years of chicken poop. Doesn't really resemble chicken poop anymore. It's completely broken down. It doesn't smell whatsoever. Actually, it smells quite good. I scooped a whole bunch out. I had a couple bags, probably like five or six 50 pound bags and I've slowly been adding it where I need it. So I'm gonna put some in here, get it all tilled in. I'll get my amendments, till that in at the same time and we're ready to go. Buggy, can you give that to Brett? I'm gonna put it away. You're gonna put it away? Mm -hmm. Brett's gonna supervise that and make sure it gets put away. One, that one goes in the powder bag. This one goes in the purple bag. Whereas it is nice and fluffy, I need a lot more organic matter. I've got some compost. Let's see if you can see it. Right up where those pallets are leaned up against the chicken coop. It's hard to see. Grass season is a thing in North Carolina. But yeah, I've got a good amount of finished compost up here. Actually, I better look, walk up here and look, double check. There's a lot of times I'll do that. I'll be like, yeah, we're doing this. And I walk over there and no, we're not doing that. Okay, we're doing that. That's a good amount of compost. That is finished compost. Uh, I make compost with the chickens. Uh, I have actually stopped making compost about a month ago. I still have the compost ring in there, but I kind of messed up the ground in here. I added a whole bunch of fill dirt because every time we get in there and we take compost out, a little bit of dirt goes with it. Well, in combination that and the chickens constantly digging holes and dirt bathing, it was getting to where there wasn't enough dirt in there and I needed to add dirt. So I added dirt. Well, that dirt was very fluffy and full of rocks. And so anytime I've added stuff to make compost in there, uh, it just disappears into that dirt. So I'm gonna make a few batches of compost in there and once it's like a for sure difference between the two, the dirt and the compost, then I can get it out of there easily. Otherwise, I'm just gonna get in there and get dirt mixed with wood chips and grass and stuff. It's not very good compost, but. All right, I'm gonna grab the wheelbarrow and bring a couple loads of compost down here. Furrows. I don't know why I even think about using a shovel. I just did that in like five minutes. That was nothing. That was so easy. All right, I'm gonna go inside and wash some of this mud off of me. Cool down a little bit. So usually puzzles are like reserved for like rainy weather and cold weather, but we talked about puzzles and it planted an earworm. We started it yesterday and it was raining. <laughs> it wasn't finished in a day. All right, so it smells really, really good in here. Yes, it does, actually. <laughs> what do you have cooking? Uh, chili verde. That's Pork. right. Yeah, so we'll do tacos, and then I got some rice going in the night. It's gonna be spicy. I don't know. I mean, 
the sauce that I had canned was like fairly spicy, but sometimes when you dilute it with all the pork juices and stuff, plus, you know, short stuff over here, yeah, has to eat I guess it's so. too spicy. <laughs> it's all right. I have the technology to make my food spicy. You do, yeah. Good. All right. I'm going to wash up because I am like covered in mud Let's and compost. Yeah, a little bit. So. That's all right. I'll sit down and drink a, uh, a light cup that. of coffee. Okay. And there is said pork roast. I'll shred that. It spit the bone out, so it's, like yeah, it's pretty much ready to it's shred. It's not super, super shreddy all the way through, but it's mostly through. Well, it looks like it'll eat. Yeah, I think it will. <laughs> all right, so you're warming up some tortillas. Mm -hmm. I guess I'll shred this up. Okay. I want to see. See what? You see? Yo, here, come here. Hurt. Just don't touch the pot. It's very, very hot. What do you think? Mmm. 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 Yeah. So we haven't done chili verde in a very, very long time. Yeah. This is quite tasty. Nice. Rice is ready. Yep. Tortillas are ready. Meat is ready. All, All right, right, let's eat. All right, empty to table. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're the last ones eating. That's it. Uh, if I can't talk right, it's because my mouth is a little on fire right now. <laughs> I uh, elected to have a pepper. Instead of eating it with the first taco, I had it with the last taco, so I'm, I'm still pretty on fire. Yeah, it's pretty spicy. It's pretty. All the seeds hit like the side of my gums, and that's what's on fire, oh. so it's just like, aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Half my smile is on fire. <laughs> That's right. It's good for what ails you. Oh yeah. That was really tasty. It was really tasty. Like, definitely had a like good chili verde flavor. Mm -hmm. Chili verde, for those who don't know, I assume everybody knows, but there are going to be a few people. It's like, what's that? Yeah. Uh, basically, you make a green salsa out of tomatillos and peppers and onions, and you roast it all first, and yeah. then blend it up, and it's just a green salsa. Well, then you take that green salsa, stick a big chunk of pork in it and cook it in that salsa until it's, shredding. until it's just shredding and falling apart, that's chili verde. It's so good. It's delicious. Yes. Uh, the spicier the better, in my opinion, but the green flavors got a lot going on. Yep. So I think that's going to do it for us for today. So we'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye.